would you be living right by the water? You know, we just came back from Miami and in Miami, you've got all of these, literally these 30, 40, 50, $70 million houses all on the water, right? And they're telling us the sea level's rising. Yet why are all the rich people still moving to the water? Are they stupid? Or could it possibly be that all of this is really about control and they're trying to usher in a whole bunch of policies that, policies that will enshrine that they always kind of stay in power and you eat bugs? Well, there you have it. Climate change has now been thoroughly debunked by political commentator Dave Rubin. Now, I'm not necessarily sure what motivates rich people, and I won't pretend to know what motivates them. Maybe it's greed, stupidity to an extent. But most of the rich people buying up mansions in Florida, they're really old. So part of the reason why they're doing that is because they're going to be dead long before Miami is underwater. So they don't really have to care about climate change. But I do know that Dave Rubin sounded a little bit different when it comes to the issue of climate change before he decided to take Koch brother money. So climate change, I can't believe that in 2015, still, when you watch cable news and whenever they're talking about climate change, they still bring on two people to debate it as if it's in a, a debate. You know what I mean? It's not a debate. And fast forward to 2021, and Dave Rubin is part of the debate that he once denounced, and he's on the opposite side. He's now saying, oh, well, maybe this is more about control. I don't have a very good Dave Rubin impression, but you get the point. It's incredibly disingenuous, and he's saying this not because he believes it. In fact, I don't think that he believes anything that he says. He's saying this for money. But there is still kind of a question at least when it comes to climate change i wouldn't necessarily say it's a debate but the debate is how fucked we are and that's really difficult to determine currently are we really fucked or are we really 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 fucked as a species now just to kind of give you a sense as to how bad it's going to get the juice media put together an honest government ad and this is a satirical video where they kind of talk about the governments and the world leaders ambivalence at cop 24 and the refusal to take climate change seriously and basically as you can see there's an emissions gap that's not being addressed so this is where we need to be and this is where we'd be if world leaders didn't break their pledges made at cop 24 so even if they fulfill the commitments that they're making that still wouldn't be enough. We're still fucked. So at this rate, we will surpass the 1.5 degree tipping point and set off catastrophic levels of climate change. So if this is a debate, I think I would be on the side of, hey guys, we're really, really, really fucked. And I think maybe we should take this a little bit more seriously. It's like we're, we're driving really, really fast and we know there's a cliff and we're headed straight off that cliff and world leaders at COP24 aren't necessarily suggesting that we swerve or we slam on the brakes. They're just saying, yeah, we know we're going to go off the cliff, but maybe we'll just go a little bit slower, tap the brakes. I mean, the end result doesn't change. We're still going off the cliff. We're all going to die. So the question is, why aren't we taking this seriously? And I think that you know the answer to that. It's because we are refusing to get off of fossil fuels. And this was addressed in that wonderful video by the Juice Media. And I want to play it for you here so you can see what I'm talking about. But you have to see the video in its entirety. And I want you to support them. Uh, so I'll give you a really quick snippet of uh, their Honest Government ad. It is incredible. Hello, I'm from the government with an update on how we're handling the climate crisis. We know you're all counting on us to solve this problem so humanity can keep enjoying its favorite pastime, continuing to live on this planet. But you see, we've realized that we are the problem. And so, how should we put this? We're actually going to get us all killed. Look at this graph shaped like a penis because it shows how fucked we are. This is where we are now. And as we can see, it's already pretty fucked with massive fires, floods, heat waves, locusts, bullshit. This is what scientists call the stop here or we're fucked point. And this is where we're currently headed, or as scientists call it, net fucked by 2050. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to play because it's really good. So I'll link to it in the description box. If you're watching this on YouTube, go watch it and support the Juice Media. Their work is hilarious, but it's also, it's bleak. It's satire. But it's, it's going to make you laugh, but also come away feeling maybe a little bit more depressed and hopeless. So don't watch it if you're in a good mood, but it's, it's really good work. Um, but essentially, the takeaway is that when we look at COP24, it's woefully inadequate. Leaders are saying what they think we want to hear, but they're not doing what needs to be done to actually stop catastrophic levels of climate change. Now, 
there was a really great clip from CNN, of all places, where Fareed Zakaria actually addressed this. And he explained how all of the good news that's coming out of COP24, that is something that's important and worth celebrating. Still, if the goal is to avoid disaster and save the human sh species, then we're just not doing enough. And we have to be honest about that. Take a look. Believe it or not, there is some real good news on the climate front this week. Approximately 100 countries announced an agreement to cut methane emissions 30% by 2030, closing a glaring gap in climate policy. They also reached a broad agreement to end deforestation in the same time frame, including pledging funds to back it up. Deforestation, by the way, produces about 10% of the world's carbon emissions. The private sector has committed to align $130 trillion dollars with the goal of net zero emissions in their investments by 2050 toward limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Positive technology trends are also accelerating. In the past 10 years, the cost of solar and wind power has declined by 89 and 70 percent respectively. And over the past three decades, lithium ion battery prices have gone down about 97 percent. Thanks to clean energy and efficiency, it is now possible for countries to grow their economies without increasing carbon emissions. Alas, it's not enough. We need emissions to actually fall and by a lot, not simply stay constant, and we are not on track for that to happen. Even if all countries follow through on the commitments in the Paris Accords, and most have not, that will reduce carbon emissions by just 7.5% by 2030. Experts agree that what we need to cut these emissions by is about 55% by that date, just to keep temperature rises under 1.5 degrees Celsius. Credit words too. That was fantastic. And if mainstream media actually covered climate change in this way more frequently, I think that people would get a better sense of what we're doing wrong because it's easy to think okay well everything's going to be okay we'll figure it out when you have world leaders going at you know going on the stage at cop 24 and basically assuring people that everything's going to be okay we're going to stop deforestation we're going to stop this we're going to do this and meet this goal but it's still not enough and i want to read to you the important point that i want people to drill into their minds so they can recite it again because it's really important even if all countries follow through on the Paris Accords, and most have not. But even if they did, that will reduce carbon emissions by just 7.5% by 2030. Experts agree that we need to cut emissions by 55% by 2030, just to keep temperatures from rising above 1.5 degrees Celsius. So I repeat, if everybody does what they've pledged, we're going to cut emissions by 7.5% when we need to be cutting it by 55% at a minimum. I mean, how can you not hear this and feel really hopeless? Well, you know, it's easy to get demoralized, but I think that part of the issue is people just don't know what we need to do, how bad it is, and they are relying on government just figuring it out. And part of the Juice Media's ad is that, you know, these... Uh, world leaders who are making these projections, which even if they're meager, they're still, you know, um, they're they're factoring in new technologies that don't even exist yet, but they're anticipating the creation of new technologies to help remove carbon from the air. When that's just it's so unrealistic, and we're we're right here when the conversation that we actually should be having takes place within this window, right? So we're so far out of whack that. If we don't have a, an honest conversation about climate change, then it's going to be too late. We have a limited window left to act, and we have to use this time very wisely. Otherwise, we will be fucked. We'll be really, really fucked. So people like Dave Rubin can claim that climate change is really about control, and climate change is disproven by the fact that people live in Miami. And part of that might also be because people just assume that, you know, human beings, we're creative, we're innovative, we're going to figure it out because we have this instinct to, to survive. But it's time to shift the conversation and actually put it in really clear terms for people. Human beings are going to go extinct if we don't take action really soon. 
So no more listening to these dumb pledges from politicians. No more speaking about nibbling around the edges. It's time to take drastic action. Otherwise, we're doomed. And I don't think that the left and people who want to save the world have been clear enough about this. I think that we have tried to not be overly alarmist and overly hyperbolic in our language because I think that it's easy for the right-wingers to capitalize on that and try to disprove what we're saying and just think, oh, well, you know, they're just trying to grab your attention. But we're to the point where we should be sounding the alarm as loudly as possible and screaming at the top of our lungs because once this window of opportunity passes and we don't take action, then climate change may be irreversible and it may already be irreversible but we have a chance we have a small opportunity to maybe save our assets just a little bit if it's irreversible then it's like a snowball it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and even if we do what we need to in the future we can't control it so we've got to stop it and um that requires us to at least start having an honest conversation about what's required stop with the bullshit Stop with the platitudes from politicians. Call them out and hold them accountable if they're saying one thing and doing another. You know, it starts with us actually knowing what has to be accomplished and why the current projections, current goals, current commitments are woefully insufficient. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.